Hello friends and welcome to another video in the Forest Wanderer costuming series. Today we will be making the armor, and I say armor because um, it's not real really armor. It's more like uh, leather stuff to hold my weaponry. <laughs> but basically, I'm not, just to preface this, I'm not a leather worker or anything, and this armor is not like made to be super super durable. It's Unfortunately it's more on like the more cosplay side of things. So I wish it were like authentic, but it is pretty strong and it does do its job and I think it's pretty epic. So I thought I would, you know, share the process with you. We will not be using a sewing machine today, which you will see why later in the video. So let's begin. The primary material we will be using for this is faux leather and I purchased two yards of this from Amazon and you can probably only get away with just one yard. I did have I do still have quite a bit left over, but it did help to have a little bit extra to practice with, so if I messed up it would be fine. The right side of the leather is dark grey and the underside is this light brown felty type material. First we are going to make the belt that all these accessories hang on. So basically the plan is to make a pretty thick belt and then hang like my sword and my dagger and then a satchel over this. I cut out two belts that are your waist measurement plus approximately 10 to 12 extra inches for overlapping. You want the thickness of the belt to be enough, um, as much space as your belt buckle allows for. I also purchased these belt buckles and I will link all the materials down below. Now I forgot that the material had to be a little bit less than the width of the belt buckle and so I ended up cutting it about two inches instead of one and a half inches which was allowed and I didn't end up fixing this but it does leave a little dent when I buckle the belt but it's not too bothersome. I folded one end of the belt in half and snipped and tapered one end to be the point of the belt. Then I tried to sew it together on the machine, but then my machine just refused to sew on this material, even though it wasn't real leather. It was just too stressful for my sewing machine, and so I then concluded that the rest of this project was going to be done by hand. So instead I used some tacky glue and a blanket stitch, which in this shot is actually a whip stitch, but for most of these materials I ended up using a blanket stitch. And I used buttonhole thread for the ones that for the pieces of armor that would take a little bit more stress and then I used regular sewing thread for the smaller pieces. All right, so we are currently outside because this hammer is very noisy. Oh, the camera is just really close. Okay, there we go. Um, so our next order of business is to oh, if you're wondering what this white thing is, it's currently holding up the camera. Um, the tripod is a little improvised right now, but don't worry, I ordered a new one, so I won't have to do things like this anymore. Anyway, so I've just finished uh, stitching both pieces together, and they are glued together, and now we have to attach this belt buckle to the end of the belt. And basically how that's going to work is we're going to take the end of this, and I've already cut it to make sure that it's nice and straight, and we're going to fold it under and the idea is we want to fold it under around this bar here so that means we're going to have to cut a hole for this thing to go through and I'll show you how that works um, I've forgotten that the thickness of the belt would have to be the same thickness as this and I made it too wide so I'm going to have to trim away the edges. So I'm going to do that by using a pin and just poking holes where I need to cut it away. And I'm not too worried about cutting these little notches because this fabric doesn't fray and it's also glued together. The stitching may come out so I might have to repair that, but I think overall we should be okay. I've cut out my notches. They are not very symmetrical, but it's okay. 
So I'm just going to put that on my belt. Or put the... Yeah. Alright, so here's what we have so far. It's folded over and this thing is just moved out of the way. So I'm going to just poke a hole kind of the center of the belt loop so I know where to cut my hole. So this is chunky, my wooden block, and uh, it's what I used to install grommets. And so now we're going to install rivets. Well, not right now, but uh, we will use it to install rivets. I'm just going to use the rivet punch. This crusty, rusty thing here, and I'm gonna poke a hole right where I want my belt loop to go. So I've got it lined up, and I'm just gonna hit it with the hammer, <laughs> but I might have to move it out of the frame for a second. And I'll try to get a better angle. Now we have our hole. We can install the belt loop, so I'm just gonna poke it through the hole first, and then thread the belt through. So I unfold it over. Ta-da! So the next order of business is we need to install rivets to join this piece to this piece. So I'm probably just gonna do two rivets, one at the top and one at the bottom. And I've got a lovely assortment of rivets, which I will link down below, but um, I don't know which one. I haven't chosen yet, but I might go with this gunmetal. I think that's pretty. Or if I want to match the belt, I could do silver. I, I'm extremely partial to both, so we'll, we'll experiment. We'll do a mix. <laughs> After that was done, I tried it on, and then I marked the point where the belt buckle rejoins the belt so I knew how big to make it. And then you're going to want to insert eyelets about an inch apart, and you want to do a couple on either side. I just did it until it looked like I had enough, and it looks more like a belt that way. <laughs> depending on whether or not I'm wearing my corset or, you know, losing or gaining weight. It helps to make it very adjustable. I also riveted a belt loop on there as well, and most of these pattern pieces are rectangles as well as estimated measurements, so I basically eyeballed most of these shapes, which is a very long-winded explanation for I don't remember the measurements of the belt loop, so... The next thing I made was the sword sheath. For the sword sheath, I started with a square of material that was five by six inches, and this was also double layered, glued, and stitched. And then I made a mini belt, and this time it was measuring the correct one and a half inch width, which was nine inches long and single layered. I attached it so that the buckle was on the very edge of the square along its shorter end. Now the belt should wrap around and connect with the buckle. To this I inserted more eyelets and then attached some D-rings to the back side using rivet, more rivets and pieces of leather. 
And using these rings, I measured how much I wanted my sword to hang from the belt, which ended up being about like four inches or something. And then I cut out this funky shape. Okay, so I forgot to pick up the camera while I did this, but basically what I did with this piece is it's got one long strip here and a shorter strip here. And I've basically, as you can see, I've folded, uh, I've folded over those strips through the D-ring and I have glued and stitched along it to secure it and I'm just going to finish by putting rivets right where these little markings are and that's going to attach them to this when I when I fold it over so it'll be attached like that so this will just be able to slip over the belt and I'm just going to do that real quick I've decided not to film it because uh, I just don't feel like filming it now, so I'll just show you what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> okay, so actually, let me move the camera. There we go. So, it's done. Or at least the uh, sword holding part is done. It's a little bit wobbly, sticks out a bit, but I don't care because I love this. <laughs> I think it's so cool. And uh, what I like most is that... My sheath stays put when my sword is out, so I don't have to set it down somewhere anymore. My my sword is is mobile now, so I can I can take it with me wherever I want to go. Next is the satchel. All right, let's see how this works. Let me just explain to you kind of. So I've got all my pieces for the satchel cut out, so I'm just gonna show you what they all are. So first I have this piece. This is the front, um, actually, let me just show both of these to you. This is the front and the back piece of the satchel. So this is the back and I'm so confused. This is the front piece. I believe it's like about nine by six inches or something let me see um this is so, so this is nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter and i actually got this measurement based off of just another bag i had lying around and also made sure that it could fit some small books and it needed to be small enough to fit on my waist so on my on my belt so i think nine by seven is a safe choice and then I have this back piece which is um, 9 by 7 and I believe there is I did not cut this on a straight line um, so this has two and a half inches of allowance for folding over and then it's got like just a, a few like like four inches of flap here honestly most of this was just eyeballed so it's got some rounded corners as well. So that is the front and back of the bag. And then we have the side of the bag, which is just this really long uh, strip of two and a half inch leather, and it is just the measurement of the perimeter of the bag. And so how I'm going to attach this is I'm going to take my wherever I put it. There it is. So I have this a uh, little hole punch tool from my rivet kit and I'm just gonna punch little holes all around the edges of the bag and then I'm just gonna use a thick twine to just sew the bag together. The rest of the pieces that you will need. So these two are meant to attach the belt loop so this small piece just literally just a tiny rectangle I don't think I measured um, it just as long as it's about one and a half inches wide so that it will go through the belt loop and that one's gonna go right there and then this one's gonna go right here and I'll just show you how it works but these are basically for the belt loop and it doesn't matter how long they are precisely but they just need to be the uh, proper thickness for the belt loop and then I have these two strips which measure at an inch by 14 inches and these are what we're going to use to attach the satchel to the belt and these just are going to be riveted onto the back and 
slide through the belt here. So those are all the pieces you will need. First, I marked the sewing holes about a half inch apart, and then I pierced them using my rivet hole punch. And this took forever, so I crawled into the, the dark depths of the basement and just hammered for hours and hours and hours. And then I took some drawstring and a yarn darning needle and I sewed the bag together. Then I marked out another mini belt, the same way I did for my sword sheath. So I previously mentioned before in my, like, plan video for this project that I was originally going to make wrist sheaths for the daggers. However, the daggers are too long for my forearms and would stab me, so I decided to attach one of them to the belt and one of them to my bicep. So I started with the bicep one. These are the pieces I cut out. All of them are double-sided and glued and sewn. So I took my project outside just for a bit more hand sewing. I will admit that the sewing does make my fingers sore because of the thickness of the leather, so that's the main reason why this project took so long, but eventually I got them all stitched. So I started by riveting these small loops onto the base of this shape to hold the dagger in place, and then I made belts for the top and bottom, and the, the top being the circumference of my bicep and the bottom being the circumference of the little the, the area right above my elbow. And for the second dagger, I basically made the exact same thing I did for my sword but on a smaller scale, and the only difference is that the um, strips of leather that hold it and kind of like dangle it from the belt. I only did one instead of two, so that's the only difference there. All right, so now it's time to make the wrist cuffs, which, um, like I said, will not have the dagger in them anymore because the dagger is longer than my forearm. So I'm just gonna kind of stick to my original design, but just without the little dagger pocket. I might do something decorative here, we'll see. Um, but for now, I think I'm just gonna make it, I'm just gonna make it like flat at the wrist and then kind of point it up towards, um, upwards towards my arm. So what we're gonna do is we are going to measure our wrist. I mean, here I just have some scraps that can kind of fit around my wrist, but I do need to kind of make a general design. So take your arm and then we're gonna mark it with some pins. Just kidding, I'm not that stupid anymore. We're going to take a highlighter, preferably non-toxic. I don't know if this one is or not, but you know, that, that's, that's none of your business. And then we're just going to, I'm gonna mark the bottom of my wrist and then kind of like how tall I want it to be. And then I'm going to do it on the other side and since it comes to a point I'm just going to kind of see if I can taper it there. And I'm just going to measure these two points. So that one's about five inches. There we go. And oh, let me zoom in here. And then I'm going to measure the back one. That one's four inches, so it'll kind of taper off just an inch. And then we need to measure the length of the width of 
the uh, circumference of your wrist. Mine is about six inches. I have really tiny wrists. And then measure the forearm from your front and back points. Okay, so that tells me we need to cut out this shape according to these measurements. So I'm going to cut out like this little crown and then I'm going to cut out these um, like thicker strips here and then some sort of decorative shape that I can rivet onto the, mid the middle. And assuming that these are going to be laced up, I'm not going to worry too much about making the the measurements at the bottom accurate. Although I might, I might leave like a little bit of a lacing gap, but I might stick to just having it be, um, I might stick to just having it close up all the way. I know in my drawing I added a lacing gap, but I think I don't know if I really like want one that badly, but I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. After cutting out all those pieces, I Gorilla glued them together and clamped them for two hours. And while they were sitting, I painted the little embellishments. And once that was all dry, I riveted the embellishment. And I attached eyelets to the ends of the wrist cuffs and then laced them up with more drawstring. That it is time for the reveal.
Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm not really an experienced leather worker, and if I was, this video would have been a lot more lengthy and expensive. But um, nonetheless, I have some really fun accessories that make me feel like a boss, and I get to carry around my fantastical inventory wherever I go. In the next video, I will be showing you guys my process for making the overcoat for this costume, and then the video after that will be all about the swooshy fur-lined cape, and I'm so excited, and then with that, this entire project will be drawn to a close, and I'm just so glad that you guys chose to, you know, watch watch the this process with me and perhaps learn something or just enjoy me rambling on about my hobbies, but yeah. Thank you for all your love and support, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Love you, bye. Blast this wretched, wretched pen. Okay, why is the camera upside down? You want the... <laughs> yeah. distracting or something. This is looking really magical right now with the sun behind my my work. You just killed the moment. About like a quarter to half inch apart on the belt so that you can leave some room. For, actually, do one inch. Um, uh, well, I mean, like, you do whatever you want, but um, guys, I'm so fatigued today. I don't know what I'm saying. Good morning. Your bow wows the cat's meow. That's how I know you're you. Guys, I have fulfilled my dreams of being Princess Erica from Barbie Princess and the Popper because now I have a stray cat that likes to watch me so. Not to brag, y'all, but um, I look like a gent today. Watch out, 1920s gentlemen. I'm about to destroy you in golf. That is mini golf, but nonetheless. Great Gatsby. Who is that attractive young woman? I was probably gonna put every outfit I wear for the rest of the week to shame. But then again, it is Saturday, so. So we're good. Oh, am I totally ruining your video? No, you're fine. See. Get by you without getting in your video. You can be in the video. It's fine. In my pajamas. <laughs> my audience will not care. <laughs> so, uh, I'll fix that. Now get this. I'm like wandering through the woods. And then I come across some thugs that try to mess with me. Mess with me. And then I... <laughs> not with that accent, you know. <laughs> You're like walking through the woods and then all of a sudden you come upon some thugs and they want to mess with you and you're like, not today. POV, it's nighttime and you're under the light of the stars with your kerosene lamp <laughs> because you just need to make a, a tiny sheath for your dagger. What an odd life I live. Not to brag, but um, I could totally like destroy you. I mean I could probably destroy you but like not with this personality. <laughs> Happy holidays. There's the chicken.
messing with it. <laughs> <laughs> 